we were expecting Pastor to preach today, and he has some uh, family visiting, and he wasn't able to make it. He gave us very explicit instructions on what we should do, and we're doing that. We're we're obeying what Holy Spirit said to do, and uh, thank you for coming and engaging. And uh, in our pastors' meeting, we have three or four, maybe five folks that are going to testify, or, or we're supposed to testify, and. Uh, And we'll try to do that. There's just a few statements that Pastor made I want to uh, just touch on. After, how many of you were here Sunday at 10 o'clock? Wasn't that powerful? So anointed. And the conference, the Word Conference School of Ministry uh, was fantastic. Every service, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Tracy, uh, the worship team, ministry team, the folks that caught uh, registration bookstore, just a fantastic job of everybody pulling together, working in unity, working in harmony. Um, just the whole week, and God just gave us the dessert Sunday at 10. It was just so cool. Pastor made a, a statement just as he was talking in the pastor's meeting, which it's supposed to be about an hour and a half. I think it was three and a half hours. He said, uh, it's the anointing on the house. That, that was a statement he made that just jumped out at me. It just went off in my spirit. And I, I wanted just to share a bit on that. And this, what you just experienced, is the anointing on the house. And something we have to get as local church family, and I, God bless you, we're glad you're online watching. Um, you, you need to come. It, it's different, right? We, we talked about that today. You can watch a YouTube video, but that doesn't mean you actually did it. This is doing it. So you, you guys are so faithful. And you're such a privilege to pastor and to co-labor with. But as we come off of this school, I met several folks who had never been here before. Some of them were from Green Bay and Wisconsin. And I can't remember where that other lady was from. Several first time Minnesota. Um, first time folks never been here, California. And uh, I, I love to go to those people and say, what do you, you know, toward the end. I mean, if you've been to school of ministry, it's a lot of classes and it's a long week and you're just kind of, you just fried at the end of it. You know, it's like you can't eat anymore. And I like to ask them, oh, what did you think? The, the, this was the common theme. As they were explaining to me what they thought, every person, male or female, young or old, they all had this to say. There's nothing like this. There's nothing. I've never experienced anything like this. Folks who had been to all kinds of strong moods of God. So we need to be really, really careful that we don't take what we have here for granted. It's so easy to take it for granted, especially in this season that we're in. We're, We're coming out of this weird pandemic two and a half year thing and uh, it's, it's so easy to become complacent. It's so easy to become, it's easy to stay at home and watch it online now. It, it's almost easy to forget the tangible feeling of God, not that it can't be and is transferred across the airways, but it, it, it's here. When they began singing, Pastor Isaac stepped up there and encouraged us, and they began singing softly, The glory just filled this place. Do you know, pastor stood up and said, Malachi to Matthew, 300 years of silence. Do you know so many churches are in that right now? They don't experience what you just experienced. We have to be so careful not to take that for granted. Uh, As I I told you the last time I got to share, I've been kind of stuck in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 13 says this. This is the Message Bible, so don't even try to look this up unless you've got a Message Bible. But it's verse 7, chapter 13. Take a good look. I'm sorry, chapter 7, verse 13. Take a good look at God's work. Who would simplify and reduce creation's curves and angles to a plain straight line? Verse 14. On a good day, enjoy yourself. On a bad day, examine your conscience. God arranges both kinds of days so that we don't take anything for granted. And there's another 
parallel scripture in Hebrews 13, verse 16, and this is the Message Bible as well. This is chapter 13, verse 16 of Hebrews. Make sure you don't take things for granted and go slack in working for the common good. We have a tangible expression of God here. This is, this is, I mean, I've been everywhere. I've never been anywhere like this. And we get to experience this every, every time we're here. We, we experience this sometimes when we just come in this room for a pastor's meeting. It, it's amazing. We experienced that Sunday. I was talking with uh, Joy today, and she shared with me uh, some testimonies of people who had come to pick things up, yogurt and different things. And they were different nationalities. Some of them were from India. Some of them were for, from Asia. Uh, some of them were black. I mean, like African black. And she was explaining to them the church. Well, we have Latino pastors and we have white female pastors and we have black female pastors and we have African-American pastors and we have redneck Southern pastors and we have... This, this weird Jeff Johns character pastor and, and, and they're all just like, really? You know, we have young Latino pastors and um, all in one building. Yeah, all in one building. They, they made some statements uh, after, they, after, they, after she explained what we do here and they, they really wanted to know, why are you doing this? Why do you give things away? One of them said, you know, we're not treated like this everywhere we go. And another one, another one from a, a different religion said, now you do realize that as they're taking these goods, you do realize that we don't believe like you believe, right? And she said, yeah, we, we understand that. And that doesn't mean we can't love you. You know, it, and the one lady said this, she said, you should never take what you have here for granted. This is an outsider, not even a believer, that looks at our diversity, that looks at our, our culture, like this community that we call church, and says we should never take it for granted. How much more should we not ever take it for granted? How, how, much, how much more? I mean, I, I can tell you as a outsider, 22 years ago, I came here as an outsider, and when I walked in the door tonight, Jim Edwards was greeting and he said, have you been here before? And I said, yeah, I came one time and never left. <laughs> but as an outsider looking in, the first time I walked in Morehouse Road, 22, 20, more than 22 years ago now, um, it was like a breath of fresh air. It, it, was, it was like life. I just want to encourage you just for a minute. Don't, don't ever take that for granted. Don't, don't, uh, don't. I mean, we, if you look at where we've been and what we've walked through in two and a half years, you know, just, just think about this. Before anything happened COVID-related, there's that word again, pandemic-related. Before any of that happened, pastor said to us pastors and said, hey, I, I, the Lord spoke to me clearly and said, we need to position ourselves for future opportunities. And he said, let's pray about it, didn't he? Pastor Bobby, he told all of us, so let's pray about it. So we prayed about it. And through agreement and unity and walking together as pastors and the board, pastor, and, and through the whole, the sale of the daycare, all of that stuff came together. And then within two months, this pandemic thing hit. And the daycare industry, as we know it in America, crashed. I mean, do you, do you know how blessed we are? That positioned us to help thousands and thousands of people. I mean, it's, it's hard. And I don't know that they have this, these pictures ready. And it doesn't matter. We won't do them anyway. But just pastor has hundreds of pictures of folks that we've helped in areas that, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Do, do you know that you, we, us, sowed $25,000 into a, uh, it, they call it cr crusades, 
with people that we're in relationship with that we have ordained that you know, like if they were to walk in here right now, you would recognize them and say, hey, that guy's been to our conference. $25,000 at that one meeting, 25,000 people in a Muslim nation accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and were baptized. That's a dollar a soul. That's a dollar a soul. Do, do you realize if, if, if we weren't in this, in this unity, that we would never have been able to do that? Well, you, you've paid for gasoline to get Ukrainians across the border. You, you have built orphanages. You have bought rice. You, it, the, the things that have happened have been amazing and sometimes we don't all get it we don't see the the full picture of it we it's so much easier to to sit back and say why are they doing that what i mean you, you know to our knowledge no one has gone without in our church family no one's had bankruptcy no one's lost a car no one's not made a payment we we have been super super blessed incredibly blessed even even to the point to where um just buying gasoline, buying gasoline to get Ukrainians across the border and um, vehicles. It's just uh, last week at the word conference, this is a cool story. We, we have bought and Pastor Eric has helped facilitate almost all of this computers, projectors, sound systems thumb drives we've sent them all over the world practically yes. i can't say the nation but there was a nation that watched the entire word conference they slept on mattresses in a church they had 1200 people get to this place to watch what you could have walked in here with no food i mean it wasn't a matter of them getting home they didn't think about getting home they just thought how can i get there they slept on the floor they stayed in a church 1200 people watched the word conference 56 of them got born again at the end of it 56 this is not like getting born again here and everybody goes oh praise the lord this is like getting born again and knowing you can walk out that door and die and be decapitated. You, us, we facilitated that. We should never take that for granted. We, we should never take that for granted. We should never take for granted. I, I sit right over there where Kim's at and talk to a young lady and she wept and cried. And she said, I don't want to go home. I was like, you got to go home. You got to take what you got here and you gotta go home, you gotta go home. Man, we are so blessed. We are so, so blessed. I just wanted to encourage you before we have testimonies and, and we have some young folks that are gonna share about the word conference and about um, the school, but be real careful and don't just trade one problem for another one. Don't just, you know, don't complain about the election and then complain about the mask and then complain about the, the vaccine and then complain about the Ukraine. And I mean, something's going to come up continually for you to complain about. Think about what is, what's here now. Think about the good. Think, Philippians 4, think on these things. Whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is wholesome, whatever is of good report think on these things you will poison yourself thinking on other things it doesn't take long to look around here and see there's a lot messed up right don't be everybody look straight ahead don't don't look at somebody beside of you but look at what's good look at what's good do you realize there's so much love in this place right now you could change the world just in this little room, there's enough love to change the world. We had, uh, we had a great, uh, con great word conference. And a lot, just, it was just super powerful. We had, um, I think Rhonda told me there were like 12 new uh, students at the end. And most of them were our, well, they were all our, uh, our young adults, teens. And 
Um, first time, first time students. That, that's, that's amazing. And that's so powerful. So, uh, Kim, you want to come up? You want to start? You might as well start. The Word Conference was incredible. Uh, it always is. I've attended them for many, many years, but this was the first year I became a student mid-conference. <laughs> And I'm really, really excited about that. Um, my husband was asking me, as I think I cried through most of the sessions I was here, you know, what's, what's God doing in you? And I said, I feel like he's been chasing me the entire week. And like, um, he's, he's always after us. He's always after our heart. But it was different. It was a relentless pursuit. Because he's taking us to a new place. And what we we need for this next season is in the word. And everything you've been saying, Pastor Gary, has been in my heart all day, even before you called me or texted me. And uh, um, this is what we need. We have this opportunity in front of us, uh, and it's so rich. Uh, ironically, Monday morning, Kevin had texted me. He was giving blood, and he, uh, he said, I just gave some random dude some food, and I said, you know, what was up with that? And he said, uh, he just looked at him. He said, are you hungry? And he said, yeah, man, I'm really hungry. And so he said he ripped open the box um, like he hadn't eaten in, in months. And I said to him, well, that's a prophetic picture if I ever saw one. And he said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, clearly, um, you know, he's hungry. I said, we, we have a feast of the finest, the finest things in front of us. And sometimes we don't even show up. So I think it's, it's a season of consecration. It's a season of laying aside the things that distract us. I have a list a million miles long of reasons why I don't have time to be in the school. I can assure you of that. But it isn't about my list. And the Lord is challenging me to say yes. When he calls, we need to hear him and say yes. It's time to come out of our homes and the holes that we've been in for the last two years. If you're not here and you were here before, you need to get back here. That's the bottom line. His glory is here and his presence is here for you. And the anointing that's on your life hasn't left. And the dissatisfaction that you feel in your soul, it can only be filled by him. We want to see you here. Good job. Amen. Craig, you want to share? Can you share now? This is my friend, Craig Snyder. He promised me he wouldn't go over 45 minutes. I told him he could have 10. Um, Didn't take long. Just to stand up here, I feel like my testimony's already been given. Everything that Pastor Gary said, Pastor Eric, the worship team, the anointing that's in this house. That's all testimony I need. For those of you who were on... uh, we're here on Saturday morning. Uh, pastor Pastor Chev was was speaking to a, a visiting pastor, and uh, he had asked, you know, what do you do with all this information when you're given it, and and how do you take that back to your church? I'm an old pastor by any means, but I was I was feeling exactly like he was. I've gathered all this, I've gleaned all this information, and Pastor Jeff had, had just fed us throughout the week, and I felt like that pot bottle, and I felt like I'd been shaken so many times. And if I come up and I just I take the cap off, it's going to explode and it's going to go everywhere. It's going to be real messy. Um, so I feel like this is the beginning uh, of, of many testimonies. This, this testimony that I have today is a very small part of it. Um, but what God is, has been doing in my life uh, with more, my wife and I, um, like I said, that's a testimony in itself. I'm one that I really struggle with control. 
it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I want to be in control. I, I want to be driving, driving the ship. And uh, here lately, God's been on me uh, to take him out of the box. Because all throughout my life, I put him in a box. And I've tried to control how things are going to look, what he's going to do. And that, and, and that went nowhere. Um, it all kind of came to a head. And uh, so long story short, coming into this week, um, I wanted to, uh, God's been working on me to try and serve and get in the church and, uh, and, and find a way to serve. And so um, when, when we were called uh, that they need catchers, um, I wanted to sign up. I, wanted, I knew this was my opportunity. This was my excuse to give myself to the Word Conference. Um, so I was here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and, and uh, you know popped in a couple of AM sessions, and 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 you know there's been prophetic words, and we've talked about it, and the hunger that is in this house right now, and the hunger I know that's in me, I know that's in all of you, um, and uh, so you know as I come to the services and, and I'm hearing the word, and I'm, I'm, I'm that hunger is growing, I, I go I go to Friday night and. Uh, and uh, as I was coming up here to catch, you know, Pastor Jeff had, had said, he said, you know, he, he's talking to everybody and inviting them up here to the line and, and, and to be ministered to. And he, he, he specifically called out and he said, you too, you catchers. He said, once you guys are done, I want you to come up and get on the line. And I knew he was speaking to me right away. And so I finished catching and I come up here. And uh, boy, I tell you what. Like I said, the anointing to move the Holy Spirit is amazing. And uh, the Holy Spirit moved on me in a way that I've never experienced before. I laid on that ground, and I just prayed in tongues like I've never prayed before. It just flowed out of me like it has never flown before. And I could almost, it was almost like being in the sense of, uh, you know, an out-of-body experience. I don't want to put it like that, but, you know, I could almost see and hear myself. And, and I'm like, what am I doing? I, I, this is this is not me. This is nothing. I, this is nothing I've ever experienced before. And all that came to my mind was, you're letting go of control, Craig. You're giving it up. You're letting him have it. You're letting the Holy Spirit move in your life. You're letting the Holy Spirit take over your marriage. He's doing things that I can't explain. That there are no answers to. Things that any other human being would, would look at and, and shake their head. and I can't explain it. But all I can do is encourage each and every one of you. Wherever you are, and I, like I said, I feel like it's already been spoken. You know, I, I feel like this all started, you know, back last fall when I finally decided, you know what? It's time for me to surrender. It's time for me to, to give my life over to God and, and, and quit teetering on the edge. And, and Pastor Gary told me a long time ago that I was, I was sitting on the fence. I don't know if he remembers that conversation, but I was. I was sitting on the fence. And unfortunately, it took me jumping off and going the wrong direction. But God has used the unlikely circumstances to pick me up, and now he's tossed me back on the other side of the fence. <laughs> I couldn't be happier to be here. So I encourage each and every one of you to let go of control. Surrender yourselves. Don't surrender just your Sundays. Surrender your Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, as Pastor Isaac said. So, like I said, I, I just thank you guys. I thank you for this church. I thank you for our pastors. I thank you for the anointing that's in this house. Y'all better hang on. I think this is going to be good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good job. Micah, do you want to give it a shot? I see you got us stand in. Micah really doesn't have a testimony, but I thought after Pastor Tracy's teaching during the school of ministry, he needed an opportunity to get back at her. <laughs> this is our very own homegrown tomato. He's just like Pastor Eric. All right. Uh, I, have, I have been in this church my entire life. I came to this church when I was in the womb. Like, and I've still been here. And then I got the marvelous opportunity to actually work here. And uh, I'm generally behind the scenes and, you know, filming people. It's kind of weird to be on the other side of it. Uh, but I've gotten 
to see so much glory, so much presence. And I am blessed throughout my life just being here. I get to, I get to edit the audio and I can take little clips from the pastors and uh, make little funny clips. And it, 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 is, it is probably some of the best parts of my life. But you know what those little clips do for me? They remind me of what they were talking about. Because I have a clip of Pastor Tracy saying, you're so stupid, but I love you anyway. And that reminds me about her entire sermon on love and how much we have to love. And then I have a clip of Pastor Bobby saying, you gonna shut your mouth. And that was directly after him talking about what people thought they were gonna do when they got to heaven. Because the fact of the matter is, you cannot even begin to think about what you're gonna do in that kind of glory. You, 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 you have, there's no way. I've been here all my life and I, I have no idea. Um, but the word conference is an entirely different beast. There's, there's a certain level of glory and knowledge and wisdom that is imparted through that. It's amazing. I, I took classes, I think the first year I started working here and I've taken like one, like I think every other year or something. This, this year we're taking apologetics. Um, but the wisdom it has imparted, even when you don't think about it, you talk to people on the outside of this. I talk to people that I go to college with and they ask me questions like, oh, how are you so financially stable? How are you doing all of this? How are you doing all this? I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. That's just God. That is just God. And, and I'm going to be honest. You, you all are talking about taking it for granted. I've, I've done that quite a bit. I come here sometimes and I sit behind the camera and I'm not at all thinking about what's happening in the service. And then sometimes you just get hit with it. Lexa, who's on camera one covering for me right now, she has gotten off of that camera to give a prophetic word so many times just because she's doing her job here. There's a presence here. There's, I forget the exact term that you used for it, but there's an anointing in the house and it stays and it lingers and it doesn't just stay here. It lingers on you. When you come here and you get that impartation and you go out, people see it. People know it. You can't, you can't walk into a place that is the exact opposite of here and not be noticed. I guarantee it 100% because I've been there. You can't. Uh, uh, moral of the story, I guess. Come to the Word Conference. Take one class, just one. That's all I've ever done. I've never done more than one class. I've just done one class every single time, and it has blessed me beyond measure. Just one. Praise the Lord. Good job. I, I don't remember if I asked anybody else. Did I ask somebody else that I didn't get to? That was excellent, Micah. Praise the Lord. Very good. Whew. When did he grow a beard? <laughs> wow. The, uh, the session Pastor Jeff preached on the Pauline epistles, I have taken that in two different 
seminary classes, different denominational seminary classes, aside from the one here. So I've had it three different times. I've never heard it taught with conflict resolution. And I've read, of course, read the epistles, I don't know how many times, and it's full of conflict. So um, Micah's right. And, and Pastor Tracy's teaching on, uh, she just barely got started on apologetics, but it was fantastic. It was excellent. It was just so good. So I, w- I would encourage all of you to, to be a part of that. And I know we have a lot of folks that are new students. Oscar and Jasmine are new students. Yeah, I was going to lasso you, Jasmine, but we are out of time. So I, got, I, you, I have an IOU on you. Man, when I left here after the school of ministry, I don't know how many classes I was at every single one of them, but I was toasted when I left here. Good <laughs> gracious, I was tired. Have you ever been so tired you can't sleep? I was so tired. And I, my, I had a truck on my lift with a fuel pump out on it. So I work on cars just because I'm sadistic in nature and love to torture myself. Uh, but I, it, it was over, what, at like afternoon or something? We did three. Yeah, so we did three on Saturday. And so I left and thought, well, I had to go to, I had to, go to Meyer, and I thought, Pastor said, you know, when you get older like us, you have more flexibility. I mean, like when I had little kids, I mean, literally when we had children, I, we, we had no money, zero money, none. Uh, we, we were in charge of a food pantry in our church and literally had no food at home. Literally, I gave out food all day long and had no food at home. So we just, I mean, really skin of the teeth stuff, you know, and I know you young people are like, yeah, sure, walked, you know, 10 miles uphill both ways to school. But it was really that tough. It really was. It was hard. Well, now, you know, we're at an opportunity in our life where we do have some flexibility and we do have some finances. And he said, you know, if you're like that, you should get gift cards. You should go buy gas cards. And, I, and I, so I had in my mind, I'm going to go to Meyer and I'm going to pay for somebody's gas. I'm going to buy somebody's gas. And I don't, I'm not much of a gas card type guy, but I thought if I can... You know, and I, I prayed on the way there. How many of you have been to the service station at Meyer? Have you ever been there when there weren't like people everywhere? I haven't, except for Sunday. <laughs> so I thought, this is what I'll do. And I said, Lord, I just want you to highlight the person. I don't want to just buy gas for anybody. I want the, the right person. You know, I want the, you put a light on them. And he's done that for me in every, everything in my life. So so I go by and I'm driving real slow, like the typical creeper, you know, looking at everybody like there was no one out there. No one was pumping gas. And I thought if I can catch somebody getting ready to pump gas and it's the right person, I'm just going to go hang on a minute and just run my card in there, you know, pull my card in and then say, be blessed and just leave. Nobody, there was nobody out there. So I thought, well, I'll go inside. Surely the person's inside. So I'm creeping around the self-checkout aisle you know, looking for the right person. And they, they, they weren't there either. And I mean, there, were, there, just, there was one guy that I thought, oh, this, and he had little kids and I thought, this is perfect. And I walk over to him and he looks at me like, what's this guy doing? And he kind of pulls his kids up next to him, you know? And, and, he, and he's already paid and he's leaving. And he tells the lady, God bless you. And I think, oh, there's my, I mean, I'm running late. You know, I blew it at the gas station. I should have did it for him. And, and so I go, I'll just leave. I'm just like, okay, you know, Lord, you were going to highlight it and I trust you. So I go by Fred's on the way home in Shadeland. So I swing by and I'm thinking, surely, you know, so I'm stalking that gas station. (laughs) You know, there's one guy there. The light was definitely not on him. He's driving a car more expensive than my house. And I'm thinking, I'm not buying that dude gasoline. I don't, if his light was on, I couldn't see the light, honestly. (laughs) So I'm just like, what the heck? I'm going on home, you know? So I go home. This is not funny. I'm frustrated. So I go home and, and, I, and I start working on the truck, you know? What else do you do after, you know, 90 hours of school? For you guys who've worked on things before, you'll understand this. This is not a fun job, full, dropping the gas tank when it's, and nobody has a bad fuel pump with the gas tank empty. It's always full by yourself is hard. It's a very difficult job. But when you're doing something 
when you're not doing what God told you to do, it's even harder. Literally, everything I did went wrong. Like I, I could, I, I told Pastor Jeff, I'd drop a socket, it would roll from here to the parking lot. I mean, I couldn't throw it that far. I, I, I mean, everything went wrong. Every single thing went wrong. It was, it, I was just like ready to scream. And all of a sudden my dog starts barking and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, now somebody's here and I'm gonna have to entertain somebody. And I don't know, doctors aren't like this because like you don't, like if you're a doctor and you're here watching, people don't just walk up and say, hey, I got this boil, you know, could you look at it? But if you're a pastor, you're always on duty. It doesn't matter if you're changing a fuel pump or not, you, you know, counsel me. And so, I know, cause this is where my head's at. Can I just be real? So I'm thinking, this is horrible. I'm having this terrible day and somebody wants counseling. So I go to the door. Well, fortunately it was none of our church people. There were like six cars on my road, two pickup trucks and, and two cars. And, and some of you have been to my house, Josh, I know, Nobody goes up and down my road unless they're coming to see me or Toby or my sons. Like nobody is on my road. But we live on a passing track. There's a passing track, railroad track in Attica and it blocks the road. And we're the first road two miles outside of town. So if you wanna to get to the other side of the track, you gotta go down to my road and turn and go up. So that means people are going both ways to get to both sides of that other railroad track. And the cars are backed all the way up and there's a truck parked in my driveway, in, in the front of my, in the road, parked. And honestly, this truck looked like, it was, a, it was a real piece. And there's a guy underneath it and another, and my dog's barking. And I'm looking out there thinking, what in the world? And there's a guy crawling around under one truck and the other truck's got a hood up on it. And he said, I, I just watched for a minute and there's cars trying to get through, they couldn't get around. And I just yelled out there, I said, hey, you need some help? Because I'm greasy, I've got gas all over me, I'm working in my shop. He said, no, it's okay, we're just out of gas. I said, I'll be right there. So I grabbed five gallons of gas, went up there, and I thought, you know what, if, God, if you don't go to God, God's gonna come to you. So I start filling the guy's truck up, I put, okay, I'm a tightwad, I put like two, I mean, it's like $4 a gallon. So I put like two gallons in his car and it won't start. He says, well, sometimes it takes a little more. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I put five gallons in it, it finally starts. This kid, he's maybe 20, maybe. Very unkept. His truck's a wreck. Vape pens, beer can. He opens up the door and a can of ravioli falls out and rolls out. In the, I mean, seriously, the, the, the kid is, he's, he is, he, he, needs, he needs a lot of help. And man, my heart's breaking for this kid, you know? And I was like, what do you do, man? And he said, oh, I just got a new job. And, and he said, oh, the train messed me up and I just couldn't get to the gas station. And uh, so we got his truck run. He said, well, I sure do appreciate you helping me. And I said, uh, do you have any money? He looked. I said, so it ain't gonna do you no good to get to the gas station, is it? And he just kept his head down. I said, you wait right here. I went to the house and got all the cash I had, brought it out and gave it to him. And you should have seen him staring at that money and looking at me. And he, he said, man, you sure have helped me. I said, well, I'm a Christian. I just wanna bless you. Not I'm a pastor, I'm just a Christian. You know the cool part of it? The fuel pump's about an hour and a half job, maybe two hours. I went back in the shop, it took me 20 minutes. It was, it was supernatural. I mean, it, everything went perfect. I wanna encourage you to buy somebody's fuel. Buy the right person's fuel. Buy the right person's groceries. Look, there's a lot of bad stuff going on right now. There's wars, inflation's ridiculous. Idiots are making decisions everywhere. But you need to sow what you need to harvest. Harvest, sowing season's coming up. There's not one single farmer out there that's gonna plant corn and expect beans. If you need, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna need gas this summer. I'm sowing gas. 
I'm sowing gas and I'm expecting a harvest because that will come. It will come back to me. And I think just through those acts of kindness, we're going to see souls come into the kingdom. We're going to see the name of Jesus rejuvenated and made famous in this area. And I, I really want to encourage you to do that. Don't, like I said, don't, don't trade one problem for another problem. Let's start looking at the solution. Let's start being the solution. Let's really start being the church. So I guess we're out of time and I know we got to end. So y'all want to worship or you just want to put, let me just put a CD on. You can take a break. You did such a good job. Wasn't worship great? Let's all stand and we'll put some good music on. Get you some gas cards. Get ready to bless some people. Let's, let's get outside of the body a little bit. The, the church is too quick to, to bless the ones they sit beside of in church. Let, let's, let's do some stuff for people you won't ever see again. Let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. So what if we just made it a goal to make the name of Jesus famous? How about we make something, how about we make Jesus and God something other than a cuss word to the world? I, I think we can make a change. I think we can make a difference. I, I think just through, just through using that, just through using that love that God put in us, I think we can make a huge difference. And I, I will guarantee you, you will not lack. You, you will not lack. God, God is, I have never been able to outgive him. And, I, and I've tried, I've tried to outgive him, but he always gives back and, and, he, and he always will. We want to open the lines up for ministry. If you're watching online right now, thank you for tuning in with us. We'd love for you to get in here and, and come visit us live, no matter where you're at. The, there's a, look, if, if you need gas, come on. <laughs> so we, want, we want you to come. We want you to come and be a part. If you're part of our local body and you've not been attending normal services and you're just watching online, look, we miss you. We need you. We need you to get back in here. Uh, it's very important that we're all together. It, it, it's extremely important and you, you need to be in the tangible anointing. And uh, uh, for you folks that are here, you know there's people that usually sit with you that you don't see. Go after them. Go after them. Call them. People need love. They need to know they're missed. They want to know they're missed. So uh, we're going to open the lines up for ministry. If you need prayer for anything whatsoever, anything that these, these guys have testified, uh, we want to pray for you. So uh, Lord, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you for the blessings that you've got upon this place. Lord, we just covenant in our heart not to ever take it for granted. We thank you for the anointing on this house, and we thank you for the anointing on our lives. Lord, that you would use us, that you would use us to change the world, and Lord, that you would use us to make the name of Jesus famous. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, the church said, amen. amen. God bless you. If you need prayer for anything, come on up. Go ahead and put us on some music. Don't forget to pick your youth up. As we come to the conclusion of our service, hey, thank you for joining us, being online with us. We so enjoy you being a part in our relationship and being a part of what God is doing. We consider it an honor. We thank the Lord has given us opportunity to share what's happening here at Whitehorse with all of you wherever you are. I want to encourage you and remind you, if you would like to give, there are different ways to give. You can give online, whcc.net. You can give by phone by calling the church, 765-477-1111, or you can come by and give in person. Your giving helps us maintain, sustain, and continue the work of the gospel and reaching out to the nations. Be sure to tithe your local church. Be a blessing to your pastors, your elders, and your leaders. Send your testimonies to us, please. We love to hear your testimonies and share them. My testimony at whcc.net. Be sure to pray with one another as we've come to conclusion let the theme of the message today and what Holy Spirit is doing be joined with faith that you might move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. Thank you for our relationship. Thanks for all you've done to help us carry out the vision. God bless you.